In this video, I will be providing you with a few structural designs that might make the floor framing stronger. And this video is part seven in our series for building a 20 by 24 foot garage with a loft above it. So let's go ahead and get started with our original design where we have three quarter inch floor sheathing. And you can use whatever you desire, plywood or oriented strand board. And you can always go back and watch the first video for more information about this floor. But it is basically going to be framed out of 2x12 with lag screws attaching it to the wall framing. And in this example here we have 2x12 for the floor joist and 2x4s for our wall framing. And the 2x12s are spaced 16 inches on center. And as one of the viewers pointed out that might not provide you with the best floor. And as I suggested in one of our other videos, 12 inch on center floor joist spacing might work better. Along with the first variation that we have here, and that would be a larger ledger, maybe a 2x14 so that you could install a few more lag screws. Or in our next option, you could go back to the 2x12 ledger and install 2x4s or larger framing studs underneath the ledger and attach them to the wall framing studs. And for those of you who are new viewers to my channel, this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I also need to point out that I am not a structural engineer and that you might need to consult one before building one of these projects. So keep that in mind when you are designing your project. Another idea that you might want to use will be to install a larger wall framing stud like a 4x4 where the rim joist breaks so that you can get a better connection. And let's not forget that you can use a combination of everything in this series to build the strongest floor possible. And to provide support for our wall framing studs, I simply installed a 2x6 sill plate instead of a 2x4. And something like this might require you to make the concrete stem wall a little wider. But again, that will depend upon the engineering involved. My next suggestion would be to install 4x4 or even 3x4 wall framing studs. And these can be installed 16 inches on center, 32 inches on center, or like we have in this example, 48 inches on center. And the 4x4s will also provide us with a additional strength for the outside wall. For those of you who have already addressed your concern about the weight of the roof putting pressure on the wall and trying to spread it apart. And this could be a bigger concern as you raise the height of this wall. For example, a two foot tall wall will probably provide you with a little more resistant to spreading or bending the wall framing studs than a four foot tall wall would. And if you don't like the four by four idea, you can always put in two by sixes or two by eight and the wider wall framing studs might also help you with insulation or allow you to put a thicker insulation in the wall framing if you live in colder areas. The wider wall framing studs will also allow you to stagger the lag bolts. Another idea will be to install a ribbon and this could be a 1x4 or a 1x6 that's going to be notched into the wall framing. And if you lay out the wall framing studs and the joists correctly to where they lap something like this, you'll be able to nail them to the wall framing studs and create one heck of a strong structural floor framing support to connect the joist to the studs, especially for those of you concerned with the wall spreading away from the floor framing. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the joist so you can get a better idea how the one by can be notched into the framing studs. And if you have a concern that this is going to weaken the wall framing studs, then you can always go to larger wall framing studs like two by six. And this is actually one of the methods carpenters used years ago when balloon framing walls instead of platform framing like we use today. And you could always do something like this where you notch for the ribbon and then have the joist connect to the wall framing stud. So that would be where it's sitting on top of the ribbon, but yet you're going to nail it into this wall framing stud. And I have only built something like this once and it was in a commercial building. So I'm not 100% sure that even though this is going to provide you with a nice connection between the joist and the wall framing studs, 
I'm not 100% sure that it's going to provide you with the best option for the weight transferring from the joist down to the building foundation. However, this option will, instead of the ribbon, we can go ahead and install some wall framing studs underneath the joist. And this is actually an option that one of the viewers pointed out. And this is actually a method that I have used before on smaller platforms like stair landings. You could use 16D nails to connect the joist to the wall framing stud. And again, this method here seems to be a little bit stronger than the previous example we looked at with the ribbon cut into the wall framing stud. So again, something like this isn't going to weaken the wall framing stud by cutting a notch out of it. And will provide us with a nice transfer from the joist down through the wall frame stud to the foundation. And as always, I saved the best for last. This is probably going to create the strongest floor framing system. And if you wanted to make the wall framing stronger, then you could always go to larger framing studs. So in this situation, we have the joist sitting on top of a structural load bearing beam, transferring the weight through the post down to our footings. And we're not going to be notching for the ribbon to weaken the wall framing studs, yet we're still going to get the nice connection here where we can attach the joist to the wall framing studs. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example here where we have the post, the connector, and the beam all of the blocking. And if we use a center post, especially for those of you who have problems finding larger lumber or somehow getting it to the property and need to use smaller beams, then you could always break the beam here to where you could have a 12 foot beam on this side and a 12 foot beam on the other side. So keep that in mind when you're designing your project. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the joist to the framing stud connection and our fire blocks. And next up, let's go ahead and remove the floor joist and take a look at the space between the beam and the wall. And the space here is going to be the distance between the curb and the wall framing or this distance here. And even though you can bring the post closer like I have done at the other side, the beam can usually cantilever this distance without a problem. And try to leave a gap between the wood framing and the concrete maybe a quarter of an inch. And of course you can see here where we have the break in the beam. And if this is too long of a cantilever, you can always move the post closer like we did on this side. And if you're building this new, you're not remodeling it, you could always build it to where you have the post right up against the wall framing. This way you can attach the beam to the wall framing studs with some type of building hardware. So again, you can always have something like this with a post base connector coming out of each footing and no gap between the wall framing and the beam. And you could always install framing anchors or L brackets to connect the wall framing to the beam along with using blocks in between the joist that will be sitting on top of the beam instead of hanging like it would be if the gap is larger than an inch and a half. And like I already said, if something like this isn't going to be strong enough, then you could always use larger floor joists and reduce the on center spacing to provide us with even a stronger floor and a stronger wall framing system. So in this example here we have 3 by 12 joist spaced 12 inches on center along with our 2 by 4s that we could always change to 2 by 6 to create something that probably only a fire is going to take down especially if we cover the exterior wall framing studs with shear panel. And another thing of course you could do would be to bolt the joist to the wall framing studs. And that is the end of my floor framing suggestions for this video. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.